Uh, hi everyone, my name is Maria. I'm product designer in Alex, um, as mentioned. And for the last few years, I was working with a product that requires additional people trustfulness. And as you know, uh, trust isn't something that we can build uh, from the first sight or on person on our product. It is something that should be gained through some time, maybe sometime even for years. But what if we don't have that time? What if we are completely new products that face a new quarantine reality and therefore face a lot of competitors in uh, online businesses uh, now? Can we somehow um, hack our users' subconsciousness and persuade them to believe us? The short answer is no. <laughs> of course, we cannot do this. But what we can do is that we can try to build our product that way that people uh, will not want to reject or throw it away from the very beginning. And this, uh, in, in this, few psychological uh, tricks could be useful. I bet uh, you face it when uh, you see something and you have that strange gut feeling uh, that something is wrong. You don't have a clue what it is, but you know, like under the hood, that something is wrong and you don't like it. Most of the time, that feeling has a background and reasonable explanation in our subconscious. That signalizes that our brain wants to protect us from something uncertain. Today, we will talk about cognitive biases that influence our um, perception of everything. As our subconscious can affect our thought and judgment, it will be good to know some uh, core principles. In this uh, talk, I will point to such things as uh, cognitive ease, uh, framing, prime, priming, and halo effects, and also how uh, huge most of us are into the patterns. So firstly, I uh, mentioned cognitive ease, otherwise known as cognitive fluency. Basically, it is the ease with which our brain processes information. This impacts how positively or negatively we feel about something. Cognitive ease range uh, before, uh, between uh, ease and uh, easy and strength. Easy is a sign that things are going well, like no threats, no major news, and no need in precise attention. But strength indicates that problem exists and it will require mobilization of our physical efforts. When you are in a state of cognitive ease, you are probably in a good mood, you believe what you hear, you trust your intuitions, and uh, you have tendency to answer a question with the very first idea that comes to your mind without even checking it. So for better understanding of this um, cognitive ease uh, and strain, I, I want to show you uh, one experiment. On this slide, we can see a cognitive reflection test. There are two tasks in this test. Uh, first one, uh, if it takes five machines uh, five minutes to make five widgets, how long would it take 100 machines to make 100 widgets? 100 minutes or five minutes? And second, very similar one, in a leg there is a patch of uh, lily pads. Every day the patch doubles in size. If it takes 48 days for the patch to cover the entire leg, how long would it take for the patch to cover half of the leg? 24 days or 47 days? So, 40 Princeton students took this test. Half of them saw this task in a small font in like wash out grade print. And the words were legible, but still for some, uh, that such font caused some cognitive strain. Second half of them saw tasks in normal font with a good contrast uh, with paper. And now I want to ask you and put please your answers in the comment sections. With which one option, first or second here was a more correct answer given by students. With first, first a gray small font or second would contrast normal font. So I will wait a few seconds for answers. Okay. Okay, different answers. So I will just tell you results. Believe it or not, uh, it tells clear story. 90% of uh, students who saw tasks in normal font made at least one mistake in the test, but the proportion dropped to 35 when the font was barely legible. Yes, you heard this correctly. Performance was better with the bad font. 
that because cognitive strain uh, awoke our brain to reject the intuitive answer and to think better on tasks. I guess no need an explanation how to use this information in design. At least make uh, text easy to read and uh, your user will believe you're far much likely than with barely legible one. And this belong, uh, belongs not only to text presentation. Comparing these uh, two forms, right one is much clearer and it's easier to distinguish where our inputs are. So uh, this supports cognitive ease and therefore it's easier for users to trust this platform, his money and his credit card. Of course, especially it's uh, important uh, when we think about people with some uh, size problem. So don't forget about them, please. Next, I would like to mention framing effect. Um, it is a cognitive bias where people decide on options uh, based on positive or negative connotations. For example, the odds of uh, survival one month after surgery are 19% is uh, more reassuring than the equivalent statement that mortality within one, one month after surgery is 10%. In simple words, uh, framing is a uh, like prep uh, with uh, which we present any information. And uh, Nielsen Norman Group conducted an experiment. Imagine that you are working on website design and have just completed a usability test with uh, 20 users. One task involved using the website search function. So uh, you now have a numerical measurement of how many users were able to find and to use the search button. The test results could be stated in two different ways. Four out of 20 users could not find the search but a function on the website. And second, 16 out of 20 users found the search function on the website. Logically, both of these statements described exactly the same result, which is an objective data point, right? But if you're like, uh, uh, if you're like most people, uh, the conclusions you come to might be very different depending on which phrasing is used. As uh, shown in this chart, practitioners who saw the findings uh, described as a failure rate uh, were 31% more likely to believe that uh, design needed to be redesigned than those who saw the same result uh, expressed as a success rate. As we see, framing is a like, necessary part of the decision-making process. And people tend to avoid risk when uh, they see a positive frame and seek for risks when a negative frame is presented. That's why sentence, uh, will keep your data safe, is much better than to, uh, you will not lose your data because uh, it doesn't have uh, this negative uh, shadow uh, in its root. And our brain tend to react on this negative uh, word lose uh, even before realizing that it's denial. So uh, just experiment with different frames. Uh, try restate your information in reverse terms or from different point of view. Uh, just take a few seconds uh, to, to flip uh, a data point from failure rate to success rate and see how it change perception. Next thing, it's a priming effect. This is about, so to say, the ground of our perceiving any information. Everything Thing that we see, hear, or even smell, and even if we didn't realize that we did it actually, can affect our perception of information and therefore uh, change our minds, uh, decisions, or deeds. I would like to show you a perfect demonstration of framing effect, which was uh, um, conducted in an office kitchen at a British university. Uh, for many years, uh, members uh, had paid uh, for the tea or coffee by dropping money in an honesty box. They had a list of uh, suggest the suggested prices, but uh, one day a poster was displayed just above the price list with no warning or explanation. And for a period of 10 weeks, a new image on poster was presented each week. That was either flowers or eyes that were looking directly at the observer. No one commented on the new decoration, but a contribution to an honesty box changed significantly. The poster and the amounts that people put into the box are shown in the slide, actually. So on the first week of the experiment, two uh, wide open eyes stare at the drinkers, whose average contribution was 70 pence. 
On second week, the poster showed flowers and average contribution was about 15 pence. And the trend continues, as you can see on the slide. On average, people contributed almost three times as much in I weeks as they did it uh, in flower weeks. A pure reminder of being watched caused people into improved behavior and such effect occur without any awareness of them. So how this could be useful in design? Uh, actually, in nowadays situation, our humanness uh, will be even sharpened and our emotion will lead us even more uh, than previously. As we are surrounded by machines now, it's uh, important for most of us to stay human. And if we aim to wake up person's uh, social responsibility, let's say, we can play the staring eye streaks. And yes, it's not completely about building trust, it's little manipulation, I would say, but that's how we can persuade people in something. Of course, priming, uh, it's not only about eyes. It's just important to realize that uh, instead uh, of posting some just beautiful picture without any sense, we can think every image through and adjust them to our needs. In design also very important uh, place take uh, accidental priming and negative triggers. Actually, it is important to avoid them. Here we can see an uh, example I took from Content Verb. Uh, there was two versions of subscription form. Near the first one, there was sentence, 100% privacy, we will never spam you. And near the second one wasn't any. They conducted A-B testing with uh, these two options. And now I will ask you again, which one or, or on your mind, which one variant can get better conversion, like more signups? Okay. Great. So, thanks for your answers. So very different uh, answers as well. Uh, A-B testing show result that mentioning uh, word spam decrease uh, quantity of subscription for almost 19% in comparison to form without any caption. And it's uh, very important to avoid such negative triggers, uh, not just in text, but uh, also regarding some visual information like uh, illustration, icons, etc. And the last effect I want to mention is the halo effect is when one trait of person or sink is, is uh, used to make an overall judgment of that uh, person or sink. The halo effect works both in positive and negative directions. If you like one aspect of something, you will have a positive predisposition to everything about it. If you dislike one aspect of something, you will have a negative predisposition towards everything about it. So if users like one aspect of your website, from the very beginning, they are more likely to judge it favorably in the future. That's how some companies try to gain this halo effect. Um, some, some, sometimes they uh, place famous people feedback, um, good uh, pictures of good looking persons, they mention um, well known companies as their customers, and they make qualitative and beautiful design. Uh, of course, just because site is beautiful, it doesn't mean that it's easy to use. But uh, the thing is that judging uh, beauty is uh, often far simpler than judging ease of use. And a uh, few years ago, Google made research and found out that sites with visual simplicity uh, online users consider as beautiful far much often than their visual loaded competitors. Uh, also, there was found that respondents define, define any web page as beautiful or not beautiful in one fifth to half a second in the blink of an eye, uh, in other words. So as you understand, we don't have too much time to create this fast expression, impression, uh, but that's definitely something that we, will help uh, people stay with, our, with us from the very beginning. Uh, the same Google uh, example um, uh, I mentioned showed that uh, people tend to like website or not, not only for their visual simplicity, but also for accordance with uh, their stereotypes. Most of the times um, they like sites with which layouts were in accordance to their cate category. 
we need to count on the patterns that uh, people have regarding how uh, one or another side should look like. Don't worry, it's blurred intentionally, just to show how much layout means to us. I bet that even without seeing any word or clear image, we understand that this is e-commerce platform. And this is definitely some kind of landing page. And this is blog. So it's a really important moment. If resources create dissonance in our head, we have to reject it, consciously or subconsciously. And cognitive ease and uh, speed of uh, visual information processing can play a significant role here. Well, sure, experiments with uh, layouts uh, can and should take place. But if we don't want to risk this new product, if we don't have a chance to do it, we better use familiar patterns. Of course, uh, that Strix is like a drop in the ocean and there are so much more to care about. But keeping in mind at least these psychology tricks, uh, our product will be perceived by people easier, even without uh, the awareness of it. And uh, despite it's not a magic wand, but understanding some core psychology principles and applying them can help. And what is more important during an hour day crisis, it requires minimum budget and efforts. So I kindly urge you to look on your product from cognitive perspective and see how it can be improved. Thank you very much.